Here, 2023, in January, uh, EPA talks about setting their own MCL for PFAS, um, maybe as low as zero to 20 parts per trillion. Graphene wide district two test PFAS as required by state and continues to be under the MCL. In June, the board discussed joining PFAS class action suit. Graphene wide district also thinks EPA is going to set limits below 20 parts per trillion. So they take, pro so we took a proactive approach and decided to move forward with treatment options, understanding that this is a long process and any state or federal funding options will, will be used up quickly. In July of 23, Graphene wide district sends an SRF funding application to the state for East Street and Worcester Street Wells requesting 23 million of a low to zero interest loan. In August, board both to join the PFAS lawsuit. In September, the board realized that additional water may be needed during construction and starts the process of getting an amendment to the Flat Street um, permit allowing for more water withdrawal. Um, we understood that this process may take over a year and may not be approved by the DEP. October of 23, annual system wide hydrant flushing started and in November of that same year, uh, it was completed. In December, board acting correctly calls a special meeting appropriates 250,000 for a pilot study at the East Street, Worcester Street, also approving special meetings appropriated 50,000 uh, for the land acquisition to study at Trinity Ave. Trinity Ave well sites, well site has no land uh, capacity for treatment plant. In December of, of that same year, Graphen Wise received approval uh, from SRF for 23 million, zero interest loan. Now they start the process of hiring an engineering firm to start and design permanent construction phases. So that's what we did in 23, which carries on to uh, year 24. Uh, during January, March, uh, Grafton Wide District hires firm to investigate the use of, of town land on Power Line Drive to put Trinity Ave well site. Also, can you talk to engineering firm to look at options for treatment at East Street and Worcester Street wells? In April, EPA sets MCL for PFAS at four parts per trillion. All Grafton Wide District wells impacted impact requiring treatment. Treatment compliance by EPA uh, is by 2029. In April at their annual meeting, Grafton Wide District appropriates 23 million for PFAS treatment plants at East Street and West Street. This now allows the board to spend the money on the project. In May, the board discussed and hires an engineering firm to evaluate combining Trinity and Follett Street wells as one treatment plant on land already owned by the district. Board votes that this is the best option. The Follett Street well has no PFAS at this time, but planning for treatment is the best proactive approach and will be uh, cheaper in the long run. In May, pilot study starts at Worcester Street well. In mid-June, discolored water complaints start to come into the office. In June, board hires Tata and Howard engineers to perform a capacity study to determine the ability of our current wells and supply the existing housing units approved in the planning board process. Results of the study show that we have plenty of capacity. In June, board signs preliminary design with engineers for East Street and Worcester Street PFAS plants. In July, application for SRF funding submitted for Trinity Flat Wells, 32 million, who will not know uh, again on this until hopefully as early as January of 25 or later. Uh, in October, the flushing begins and currently we are at where we're at right now. Um, again, timelines on pilot testing, design, permitting, bidding, construction, it's fluid. Um, Present to start up of a plant could be anywhere from 18 months, 24 months, depending on, you know, on what's going on. All depends on, again, the supply of materials, construction, permitting, everything. Everything is, again, fluid. We're hopefully to have all this done, obviously, by the mandated time of, of 2029, but uh, we're definitely pushing to be sooner than that.
Um, at this time too, um, just for a little history also, Trinity Ave, which is our newest well, is not running at all. That is totally shut down. Um, we are sparingly using um, Worcester Street, uh, but you know, with the demand, we had to run it a little bit more than what we wanted to. Um, the demand and the pilot. And the pilot. And, and with the pilot also, um, the pilot program is what really forced us to run that, you know, more than what we wanted to. Um, D Street is running fine. Um, and Flett Street at this time is, is running fine. Any questions at all? Yeah, that's okay. Sure, you can add. Um, <clears throat> Bob Frederico, we live on Midgley Circle, which is in the countryside neighborhood. Um, one thing to remember is that the EPA dropping from 20 to four parts per trillion is going to affect just about every municipal water department everywhere. Um, we, as a board and as an organization, have decided to take time and get ahead of the curve because like Mike was saying, um, you know, some of the engineering that goes into like the pilot test to determine, you know, what filtration and how strong the filtration needs to be for PFAS, which is why we have to run the Whistle Street well so much. Um, those engineers aren't a dime a dozen. You just can't hire one out of a phone book. These people are pretty much specialists and the design and, and, and uh, construction of these things uh, it's not just any general contractor. So uh, what we hope to do is get ahead of the curve and get these things started earlier than later. Um, so I just want to make it clear that, you know, the Grafton Water District is not being singled out um, because of X, Y, Z reasons. This is going to be all over the place. Um, and, and we're just trying to do what we can to stay ahead of the curve. Again, 0% funding from the state or a low interest loan from the state. We don't know how long that lasts. I've seen other programs from the state run for a couple of years or like with the school building assistance program they have, it started out at 75%, now it's down to what, like 30%? If you wanna build a school these days, you know, as, as, as the political climate changes, the amount of money that's available for projects like this is gonna change. So, you know, if we can get in on a 0% or a low interest rate at this stage of the game, it's worth it. So, um, you know, we, like I said, we've been taking steps to get ahead of the curve, get on the list and the bandwagon early. Um, you know, the decision to build one treatment plant for Trinity and Follett Street uh, was a, a suggestion by the engineers in that it would be less expensive and easier to operate one larger treatment facility for those two wells. Um, the other thing that we, we talk about, you know, in terms of raising rates and all that other stuff is the fact that um, this entire enterprise operates on about a $2.9 billion budget per year. So, um, you know, it's, and that covers the building, system improvements, salaries, insurances, all that sort of stuff. Um, the, typically the, 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 the connection fees go to system improvements. Um, one of the things that I'd like to just say that, you know, I'm, 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 I'm saddened to see that the water is brown. Uh, however, as you can read through this system and through these notes, that the DEP is the one holding our hands. Uh, in terms of turning on Follett Street and getting more clean water out of that, the wells are regulated by the DEP and they give us a certain amount of gallonage we can pump out of each well in, a, in any given time. We, if, if Follett Street is running great and it's rated and the DEP has us limited to 2 million gallons a day or whatever, okay, we just can't go turn the faucet on and say we're taking 4 million gallons a day out of it. DEP doesn't allow that. So my, my point is that Understanding the brown water situation, and I'm, I'm very disappointed that somebody from DEP isn't here to listen to this. That in 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 ninety percent of these cases, just about all of this, our hands are tied, you know. And and 
you know, what can we do to figure something out in the meantime? Because, you know, from 2024 to 2029, that's a big jump. Um, and I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm as frustrated as you are, you know, because our hands are tied. I would love to go on Follett Street, turn the dial up and just say, hey, we're all good. But it's, it's, it's not in the cards. Okay, so um, I just wanted to add. Yep, that. no, that's absolutely fine. Yeah, I think in some nation, maybe before we get to question, you can see that we've been trying to address future problems in the present time. We are limited, and it may not be known, but we're a part of the town, but a separate board of the town. The town fathers are separate from us, our building practices, our taxing, if you will, any of that is separate from the town of Brown. Uh, our elected officials, as you can see by Mike being here tonight, have been involved, are aware, and will be working continuously on our behalf. But it's not something that we didn't, we anticipated some problems, but our hands are tied. We're trying to do the best we can. So we'll open it up to questions. Hi, in the Hutchins from Three Bay Sherman Road in the Trinity neighborhood. Yeah. Um, I've been to a few meetings with you all over the past year. Um, one question I have, um, and, and I will say up front, I have not had groundwater problems at my house. Mm -hmm. I don't know why, but um, so I don't have a complaint about that myself. Um, but I'm, I'm wondering if the increased chlorine levels that are going on at Worcester Street are only for the pilot test period. And once that backs off, the chlorine dose will go back to Dave, what it usually was. Dave Rand, can you answer that? Uh, no, that's the way it has to be. It has to be 1.2 uh, coming out of the well for that one well. Every, every well has a different, like Flush Street's 0.2. But will that continue? In the It'll period? continue, yes. Okay. It has to run the well, can't be set off an alarm, which yeah. they're not very responsive. It has to. And is that because of the E. coli protections? No, yeah, it's to prevent that. Okay. Yeah, so there's that, a reason. That was set by the DEP. Okay, yeah, that was so there's health and, health and safety reasons. Yeah, right. And the what problem is? is that when we do that, that's what starts dropping the magnets, which gives you the discolored water. Right. Part of that is because you have the federal government setting standards, and many of the cities like you saw in Michigan, they take the water directly from a river that everybody dumps stuff into. And they increase the chlorine to address the bacterial content. But we have magnesium in the wells, and that causes that chemical reaction. But again, it's, it's not us, it's the state and federal requirements. Um, also, um, that, so that was really my only question. Um, I have some other comments, but it's not a public chance. You want to? Sure. I got one. Uh, John Horniak, I live on Elmark Drive. Um, Grafton. What happens if we don't get the 32 additional million? Uh, you said you went for 23 for the zero interest loan. Um, that is, uh, that's about half, right? So we're short, do you say 32 in here for this round application? Mm -hmm. That's not guaranteed, right? So right. what happens if we do the plan if that doesn't happen? Alternative funding sources. I mean, it, either way, this whole thing is gonna to have to be done with loans. Um, so, you know, there will be a reflection in the water rates as all users will have to share in that cost. Again, we're not related to the town in terms of funding. We're not related to the state in terms of funding. We are our own entity, if you will. Um, I can't I'll just stick on to be honest. <clears throat> I can't imagine the state not putting up some sort of low interest or or no interest loans to take care of this because this is going to be a massive situation across the state and you know across the, the, the federal government as well, because it's the federal government driving this. 
you know, the, one of the reasons why the PFAS allowance went from 20 to four is because somebody came up with a detection um, uh, strategy to figure out how to get that low. Okay, so they literally moved the goals post on us, you know, and now we have to live with it. So to answer your question, you know, if the state or if this low interest loan doesn't come through on the second part of it, we'll have to look at alternate funding sources. Um, you know, I hate to go commercial bank route, but um, I, I would be very surprised if there wasn't some sort of a program that's made available to municipal water districts to, uh, to help that out. Yeah, I have a follow up question as well. You mentioned in mid June, there was dis discolored water complaints came in. I swear I've been seeing that way before mid June. Uh, we haven't complained. Um, obviously, there, there's times where the kids don't want to the bath because the bath looks like tea. Um, are you saying that's related to the iron and manganese in the water, or is that sediment? Because I've had some water tests and I see high sediment, uh, high chlorides uh, related to hardness. Um, so I'm trying to get a water system installed. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm fortunate enough that I can afford something like that. Right. I imagine there's a lot of people who can't afford something like that. They right. have to deal with brown water, manganese, iron. Right. You know, there's reports of people breaking out the hives. Yeah. You know, that's an extreme case, yeah. but it's a result from the water. And I, I, I'm just kind of interested, is it strictly from these wells in Grafton, or is it a Shrewsbury, is it a North Borough, is it a West Borough, is it all over the place? Or is it just strictly from these wells? I, you, you, you've got a couple of points I need to make up to, to bring up in the, in the questions. In terms of the sediment and stuff like that, and the technical things, these guys down at the end of the rope can answer your question. Um, Northboro is MWRA. Is that what? MWRA. I, I'm sorry, I'm not from here. Okay. So I don't know what MWRA is. Mass, um, Northboro gets the water from the Mass Water Resource, Resource Authority, yes. which is the Quabbin Reservoir, which feeds Boston and most of the metro Boston area. So Northboro does not have their own town-wide system, so to speak. Uh, Shrewsbury, I think, is on Wells. I'm not mm -hmm. sure. I'm not sure how the other towns do it. Yes. But a lot of a lot of the towns are either pulling out of rivers or the or lakes or um, um, drilling. Mm -hmm. All of our wells are drilled. Okay, and we've got five sites. Yeah, four work and four and, and the, the fifth of the high school. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but that's not at all. Right. Right. So, you know, it's one of the other things you've mentioned is you may have had brown water before June. Um, occasionally, brown water will come up if there's been a high demand in usage, like a very high demand on the weekend. Um, I've been on the fire department or was on the fire department for close 20 years. If there's a major fire in town, that would cause it because when you have a high flow or high demand, it's really going to push the water through the pipes and it's going to kind of scrape off yeah, whatever's in the pipes. Okay, so it's not uncommon after a big event to have water, brown water in the pipes, and usually it clears up within a day or two. Um, and, and typically it's not real brown, it's, it's kind of a, you know, it's certainly not like this. But, you know, new lines going in. Flushing out the lines when we did a loop up through Tufts. Okay, before first thing you need to do when you put, you put a new loop in the water in the street, you got to flush it all out to get all the impurities and all that stuff out. Sometimes that could cause a disruption. Okay, the, the, the best way to run the flow is to keep the flow consistent all the time. You know, spikes either up or down in the amount of gallons you set out. Um, could, could cause could cause an issue, and then just like everything else, you know the pipes are aging, you know, um, and depending upon when the pipes were purchased, um, will have an effect on the quality and longevity of the pipes. Historical data um, during World War II, okay, when the steel mills were using steel for tanks and ammunitions and everything else, there wasn't a lot of steel left in the US to help build, or iron left in the US to build high quality water pipes. So historically those pipes have been going worse. 
Okay. Same thing with the pipe manufacturers. Sometimes, you know, the giant pipe warehouses, they go to China to buy their stuff and it's cheap garbage and there's nothing we can do about it. Okay. So there's a variety of things that happen uh, regarding occasional brown water. Okay. Um, he's going to show you something. Oh, it's the old steel pipe. That's the old steel pipe. Okay, and you know it's what's coming off of there is basically iron. You know, rust on rust on the inside. So, like I said, if you have a nice even flow through these pipes, okay, chances are everything is going to be pretty much okay. You get a, a a downturn or an upsurge where you know there's a high demand, it's going to start flowing that stuff through and all sloughing it off. Okay. Now, that's a different situation uh, told than what Worcester Street is with the test, because they have to add so much chlorine to do the test so we can calculate what kind of filtration is needed for the PFAS. This test needs to be done. I don't know how long this test has to continue for. Um, they're going to continue, they're going to do some more testing this fall and winter, but at that point, the demand will be down, mm -hmm. hopefully, and mm -hmm. uh, they can, we can just pump that waste so it doesn't have to go into the system. Mm -hmm. uh, what that's going to entail, they haven't really told the ship. So it um, might not be quite as, as bad as the last test as far as I'm concerned. But they, they do need to do more testing, but hopefully it won't be back in the system. We're looking at you to put it into waste so it doesn't even go into the pipes. So, so we're saying that this just discoloration Recent one is from iron and manganese and as a result of this this test that you're doing. Yeah, the manganese interact or the uh, manganese is in the water. You went to the well, you take a sample of the water, it's crystal clear. It's in there, you just don't see it. Once it goes out into the system, it oxidizes, the chlorine oxidizes it, it turns into like a fine powder, and then it just sits and it rolls around into the neighborhoods and dead ends. And the only way you get it out, it doesn't just go away, you have to flush to get it out. And that's why we have to flush basically our whole system in order to get rid of this. And then you know, the water should be much clearer after that. And then, you know, like I said, we're, got, we're working on some solutions, you know, next summer when the demand gets high again, we're trying to figure out ways where we don't need to run the street as much, but we can't just shut it down if we did Trinity. You know, when you have the, the issues down at Trinity Ave, um, it was the same situation, only that was a much smaller area. I'm not saying the water was any worse, it probably, probably was worse than what people are seeing now because it was such a small area to see the stick in that neighborhood. This now has gone almost half of the North End is now experienced this. So it's, it's the same thing, just on a, a bigger scale. But I'm like the Fury Countryside Road. So you're saying the chlorine levels that they, you had to increase for the test, but I think you said earlier you had to increase it for the bacteria levels. No, the, the chlorine levels have stayed the same. The test didn't change them up or down. Okay. It's just that by pumping the well at its capacity, which we normally, at its maximum capacity, which we normally don't do, and it ran 24 7 for like six or seven weeks, nonstop. So it was out of well, you know, it ran at night when they really didn't need to because they needed to get the best data they could. Is that when we gave water to move over here? Are no. talking about wells? Well, the sun. The sun? No. Um, so anyway, <laughs> we ran the well more than we ever did, longer than we ever did. But in order to, if, if we didn't do that, we wouldn't have found these at high uh, increased magnets levels, and then we would have designed a plant. And then we were found like Trinity. You know, we put Trinity online, it was great. And then as we had to, when East Street went down and that became our main well, it drew in the magnets that it had that hadn't before. And now we had to shut it back down. So this way here, it's kind of, you know, yes, it's, it's very inconvenient now, but down, you know, down the road, it would have been, you know, it would have been really bad to say, oh, we just built this plant, but now we have to shut it down and build another one. Yeah. So what I was going to ask um, about Trinity, I think you just answered that. Yeah. I was going to ask why you don't use Trinity, but I think 
Same same reasons. I mean, the water, this one, one sec is online with its own PFAS and iron manganese plant. It, it, like I said, that's probably another million gallons a day we get out of that one. Easy. And what about Worcester Streets? I think Mike said earlier, you try for him, try not to use Worcester Street so much. Well, just because of the high manganese levels. The iron's not too bad coming out of there, it's just okay. the manganese. So the less we use it, the less it'll interact with chlorine, the less this, this colored water we get. So, but right now people are still irrigating their lawns because it's been dry, it's been warm. Um, so our demands are high. And also we usually flush this time of year when the demand starts to drop. It really hasn't started to drop, but because we're having the discolored water problems, we try to get flushing going because that's the only way that's going to solve the problem. And I know, like you said, your neighborhood especially has been dealing with this for a while. So we're trying to get up there and clean it out. And you know, we might have we might do it, finish our flushing, but we might have to come back. If you call back and say hey, it's it's still not clear, we might have to come back. But we, you know, so flushing is the only way to get rid of this, and, and it just takes time. We have to start at the source, the wells, and move out into the system so we're dragging clean water with us. We can't just go to our neighborhood and start flushing because we're just going to be pulling dirty water. Yeah, so each well has different levels of iron and manganese. Pretty much. Depending yeah. on which one you have to use and how much you have to draw out of it. Yeah. The levels are going to go up and down. Like East Street is really bad with iron and manganese, but we have a treatment plant there. So when it comes through the treatment plant, it's almost at zero. So. So it treats for iron and manganese yes. at the Eastern? Specifically, yes. And the other, the other treatment plant you're proposing would do the same thing? Yes. Mm -hmm. that may, maybe not the same scale, might be more, might be less. We don't, that, that's what the problem is. And also treat for PFAS? Yeah, they all have to have PFAS except Fletcher, but Fletcher is going to go into the same plant as Trinity. So if down the road something comes up and we have to treat Fletcher with PFAS, it'll already be going full plant. So. Yeah. So other than the testing, the chlorine level is not really related to what you need to do with the PFAS, right? No, no. The PFAS levels PFAS are what the, 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 the chlorine levels of what the DEP has set. PFAS is relatively new. And like I said, 20, we're under, but if they drop it to four, it, like Bob said, I would say 90% of the water companies or districts in the state are going to have to put in P, some kind of P fast uh, yeah. And you said the DEP sets the chlorine levels per per well, right? Yeah. It's different for each well. Yeah. And that's based on the Yeah, there's that. Yeah. 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 Okay. Thanks for explaining that. Yeah. We got the normal routine that we have on a given basis. We have the clean water without man iron manganese from each street, the clean water from collect. Those things, those turn on first. So when our tanks reach certain height, all the wells shut up. And the tanks be using that we will use water, and then we'll end up getting that, that set point where the wells will say turn on. So those wells will turn on. Hopefully, you know, during the winter time, 99, 90 percent of the time, they maintain all of that. And then when usage goes down because maybe people are in school or it's at nighttime, tanks fill, stays in trash. But in the summertime, we have irrigation going, which the tree has to turn on. And we would have that on maybe half the gallons per minute that we would normally run at. And this pilot study was full. So you're not running Worcester Street with your cone coming in with water, just like, okay, I'm running in at normal. Now all of a sudden we're running it harder. So this cone's down here. You're getting everything else that we were pushing in and pulling in harder and faster. And that showed us that what treatment we were proposing to do would not work. So that's why we're continually going on with it. Can I ask one more follow on? Um, what if, so the demand goes up in the summer, of course, but do you ever consider a water ban on, on watering lawns for this interim period between now and say 2029 when the plants are online? So that is definitely um, something we're going to be talking about at our next meeting, which is October 9th. Um, we're going to look at all the possibilities. Um, we want to have clean water, drinking water, bathing water, cooking water, um, showering, whatever. My opinion only, and obviously we have to discuss it through the board, uh, lawns are secondary. Uh, you know, we, the demand, and just like when I went over it before um, in July from a normal, you know, we base this in January when, you know, there's no outside watering, there's no car washing really, there's no, pools there's no line and we pump 41.2 million gallons 
Um, oh. And then the summer it goes up uh, almost eight to nine million gallons uh, per month. So that's you know that is definitely something that we're we're going to discuss and look at. Absolutely. All right. Thanks. Another thing I probably just like to interject here is that we the three of us are the commissioners. We kind of oversee the operation, but you know Dave and Adam and all the guys that are operators are licensed. Okay, there's a licensing process. All the operators have to go through. It's a rigorous set of studying and testing and practical experience. Um, it takes a good what couple of years, three years maybe, to get fully licensed as an operator. Yeah, pretty much. From, okay. From not going so it's 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 not just you know you hire a guy out the street who goes down and turns a bunch of knobs. Um, they all have to you know take and pass exams, get registered by the state, and licensed to operate. So I just want to make that. Just make that distinction as well. We're also required to maintain those licenses, right. continue education throughout the time that we have. Yeah. Any other questions? Oh, I one. Yeah. Um, and um, seeing some of the numbers, have got some updates tonight, but um, a price tag of $50 million to treat our water. Um, I would hope the water district is going to consider right. alternatives such as possible connection to Worcester. We have interconnection with Worcester. They use surface water. They don't have iron and manganese problems. They have plenty of excess capacity. Their DEP authorization is 29 and a half million gallons. Last year they only used 23 million gallons. They have a 50 uh, million gallon per day water treatment plant. So they've obviously got excess capacity. Their PFAs um, from last year's report were 1.9. So they're already meeting the standard. Um, and yes, I know there would be an interconnection cost. There would have to be some modification with maybe a pumping station, mm -hmm. something like that. But I have to think it's going to be less than $50 million to treat our own water. Mm -hmm. Um, so I really would like to see the water district do an alternatives analysis before you spend more money uh, going down this path. Um, and like you said, there are some risks. And like, what if we don't get the financing? And our water rates are certainly going to go up a lot um, with doing this. So I, I think it's only fair to all of us um, to consider that alternative. I mean, still have a water district you can still operate the pipes and the valves and all that but um you've got a neighbor with a supply that meets the standards and we have a connection with them we're in a very fortunate position that way not everyone has that luxury mm -hmm. and as for spending money on a lawsuit to fight the epa i don't know that's a great expenditure either um those Standards of again to protect our health and safety, and our children. Um, PFAs cost expensive, uh, so there's good reasons. Uh, and someone has determined that the decreased cancer risk by removing it is worthwhile for us. Uh, so again, I, I don't know. I'd be recommending throwing that money after a lawsuit against the EPA. I don't know. That's a winnable battle, quite honestly. Um, I also do know that Worcester um, does sell water to other communities. They have the ability with the process you have to go through, but it's doable. Mm -hmm. um, it probably is more quickly done than building these water treatment plants. We, we, we can certainly look into that. Um, I do know that um, you know, municipal water authorities have connections and agreements with some of the surrounding area, surrounding authorities. Um, the pricing structure of the water, I don't know if, if like, theoretically, purely theoretically, we would have time for Worcester. I don't know if we could buy water for them at an affordable rate, okay? Because I don't know what, how the rate structure is. So I think it's worth looking into, like you said. Um, I think there's a, there's probably a lot of moving parts to it. Um, you know, like you said, do we have the piping? Do we have the size of the piping that's out of here? 
that we're going to need to do a pump station. Um, you know, if you know, what's 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 the price? Right. Yeah. I, that's, that's what I think. I'm not, I'm not so I'm, I'm it's certainly the best idea, but it's it's. I think it's worth looking into. A look, Mike. Is the lawsuit that you joined is that against EPA? Okay, that's what I was questioning. <laughs> manufacturers of PFAS. Yes, no, I on board. The manufacturers of PFAS. Yes. Okay. No, of the material itself. Oh, of the manufacturers make like, components. People that make the yeah. stuff that cost the PFAS. Yeah. Okay, that's, that's who the lawsuit is against to try and recoup some costs right. from the manufacturers. Yeah, awesome. I don't know where that lawsuit is. There is more information than I have to give up. I have another comment. So, the, the board meeting on the 9th, you're going to discuss options regarding rebates for in home treatment systems. What type of in home treatment system? Anything that I install, or do I have to meet certain standards? Is it for the home owner who puts in a local treatment system in their basement, or it is, that would get this rebate? What are you talking about? It's, well, it, these guys can correct me if I'm wrong, but there's a whole variety of different types of systems. Could be something as simple as just a couple of screw and cartridges, <clears throat> or something where you go to a place like High Quality Water and they do an entire system where they have all sorts of engineering that I don't know anything about that takes care of the situation. Um, I'm not sure how we would go about coming up with a rebate system or, or whatever. It's, it's something that we're going to have to take on as a, as, as, a, as a commission and try to get our heads around this thing. Um, like I said, there's a lot of moving parts. I mean, you know, is, it, is it funded? Is it not funded? And, you know, how big is the system? You know, what, what type of a system would you be willing to participate in? Um, you know, also, I would ask the question if it's a, if, it, if there's any legal liability on, on the part of the district to start saying you should use X system or Y system or Z system. Um, I would be very careful as a, as a quasi municipal organization to start actually referencing and recommending specific items. Um, because I know I work in municipal and as, as a building inspector and I can't, I can't tell somebody to use XYZ contractor okay, because it puts liability in the town. So that's one of the things we're going to have to look at when we start talking about, you know, any kind of a rebate program or a discount program or, you or know, a voucher program or a voucher or whatever. But, you know, it's something that we certainly are going to discuss. You know, keep in mind, the discussion is going to be very preliminary. I don't, I don't foresee any rock solid solutions coming out of that for, for, for a little while. So if I put in the system, say this weekend, I would just have to kind of sit on that and then cross my fingers that a rebate program is going to come out. And if so, it might be a hundred dollars, two hundred dollars. You know, it's not going to, it's not going to pay for the whole system, obviously. Right. I mean, like I said, you know, the, the, the amount of participation that the district is going to be willing to get into, I think, is, is, is going to be a discussion point, you know, and, you know, the dates of installation, you know, if, if say, for example, if you put one system in like this weekend, and, and if we do come up with a rebate system or whatever, you know, we'll, we'll have to set dates so that, you know, maybe you fall within the window of the timeline. So, you know, if you put one in, save your receipts. You know, I, 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 I can't promise anything except that we will be talking about it. I mean, I, I, ideally, my water system would just be redundant, right? Because we're going to have clear, pure water coming out of the. Well, it's, you know, in, I, I, in the perfect world, um, whatever filtration you put in is going to be temporary in terms of, and then it, will be, it would become redundant once our water is where it needs to be. But once again, if you put that filter system in now, there's a fire in your neighborhood or we have a water main break. Everybody else's water will get dirty while until we get that fixed or the fires put out and then we have to go around and run some hydrants. You would potentially not have to deal with that. So 
I have to back flush all my sediment filters, but yeah. 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 And that's purely with the pipes, right? You're saying when you run a lot of water. Yeah, just stirring up what's what's the deal. Like, exactly. <laughs> you're, 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 you're peeling, yeah. slowly peeling that stuff off. And know that, for example, the mains we have now, the, the ductile iron mains, a cement line. So it prevents that kind of buildup. Those old unlined mains, it's just like having, a, it would be the same thing a pipe in your house. You know, it just doesn't have the cement line. So it just it keeps adhering over the years. I mean, that, that pipe's, I don't know. Guess it's probably 40 years old, 30 years old. I, I know it's on it's the sticker. I don't know. <laughs> so it's another Good. possible suggestion um, would be seasonally purchasing water from what you're using that emergency interconnection as a more quality emergency type thing. Um, I know. Communities do that with the MWRA in Eastern Massachusetts. I know Hopkinton and Ashland don't do that uh, because they just don't have the capacity in the summer. Mm -hmm. um, so they just have an interconnection with MWRA. They use as needed. Um, and I know you got to watch the pressures in the pipes and the sun and all yeah. that too, but I think it would be a decent test ground of you know, would this work as a long term solution. Knock on the door and see what the rates are. I, I, I do know that um, I work in Northbrook, so I talk a lot of Northbrook residents, and they buy all of their water from NWRA, and they are constantly screaming about our water. Excuse me, the water rates in Northbrook. You know, because the MWRA sets the rates and you just you get no choice but to pay it. Yeah, and then they would, well, I'm just I can't say it's a certain thing. If you were to want to tie into which you can't, we not on near enough to their line, but you know, the, the newer people that they, they get outrageous water rates. I mean, it's, they're almost, they're almost saying, you know, yeah, but my water for us would be cheaper than the bill here on it. That's what I want to find out. How much? How yeah, much I, that I know. We're, we're not, we're not uh, even able to do MWR. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm thinking Worcester. Yeah, sorry. Anyway, would they want to? Yes, they have extra now, but you never know. Do they, they, they want to be tied into something where they're going to have to supply us with X amount of million gallons a year type of thing? You know, down the road, if, if they need the water, yeah. Yeah, they don't want right. to be tied into selling it to us. Right. We used to sell water to. Pounds too. And obviously, now we can't because you know we're having these issues. Right. I, I know Worcester even has a connection to MWI. <laughs> yeah. So, oh, nice. It's a couple of backups. That's a good lead into my question. Um, so, assuming over the next two to five years things go to your plan, I know there's a lot of ifs here, right? And you build the three plans. Um, do you have an estimate on what, what that would do to water rates with the $50 million, you know, of zero or near zero interest loans? Do you have like a ballpark if, if, if you go through with this plan in the next two or five years? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think mean, it's all depending on exactly what we get for water. You know, I mean, if, if that 32 doesn't happen, then things are going to change. And if we get 25 or whatever, then it could be. It, it's all, it, it, it's so dependent on just getting the answer to what, what actually comes yeah. through. Yeah, yeah, the chemicals go up. Everything, everything else is going up. You know, you know, request for 32, you get 20. You know, all right, well, we got to figure out that 12 some, somehow, some way. And then that's the whole catch 22 of eliminating irrigation can prevent some of this stuff. The irrigation systems are uh, you know, built at a higher rate. That's a very good the profit to be able to pay for some of this stuff. So, it's a cost analysis, and we have to sit down and definitely put our, put our you know, heads together and analyze if we can actually do both or one. There's too many variables, and obviously, we have an exact answer to that. Yeah, I'm just curious if we double or triple, or you know, what do we do? Maybe we don't know. Like if we, if we, assuming both loans came through, it's like 50 million. Best case. Yeah, the best case, right? Yeah. Exactly. Plan A, that's plan A, right? I would love to say that, that you know, like, Everything goes up. Yeah. Yeah, we know that. Yeah, that's unfortunate. We've been to a restaurant recently, you know that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Keep picking up my kids. Are you, you eating more or not? You're not. You're eating less. You get twice as that. <laughs> Are people on the Zoom call or whatever allowed to ask questions? Are they? I have, we don't have any chat on or just. Oh, we have a chat on. Yeah, I think that was stated in the Facebook comments. I, 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 I would say, on the safe side of any kind of yeah, I, I wouldn't have a chat. <laughs> well, just... I, I would say if there, there are people who are viewing um, and we don't have it set up to take questions tonight, if you do have questions, um, uh, email the district directly and, we, and we'll make sure we, we, we see your questions. Um, I, I, you know, for Facebook, for what it's worth, um, you know, we, we read it, but it's it's not a really good forum to come up with a lot of official words or answers. So I would say if you've got questions, please send them directly to the water district and uh, we'll be sure to um, be, be going through them at the next meeting. Okay, because it's, to be honest with you, I thought we were going to have more than five people. Right. I, thought, and, I thought we were going to be back. And if we don't have a, an immediate answer, we will get an answer. We get brown water too. Yeah. So yeah. it's... it's I'm a photographer and I can't wash my negatives in brown water because it, it, it will destroy the negatives. No, that's not. It. So that's, you know, we're in the same boat. So do you all live in most, or sorry, Grafton as well? Yeah, yeah. We, in order to be a commissioner, it's, it's an elected position, just like a select board member or whatever. Uh, we have elections once a year um, for, for the positions. Um, so you have to be a resident of Grafton, you have to live within the district. Um, that's about it, right? Yep, that's, that's it. About it. Prison yeah. voter, that sort of thing. Well, it's actually kind of refreshing to see that you guys are experiencing the same water issues that we are. You're not in some big palace somewhere on the mountain, <laughs> and, you know, only yeah. drinking bottled water. And you know, so, water. so just for reference, uh, I'm on Pleasant Street. Um, I got the effects of Trinity Ave when that happened. Uh, my daughter is on 140. She's getting some of the effects of what's going on now. So yes, we're, we're aware of um, of what's going on. Uh, no, 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 that's fine. Um, but anyway, just like I said, we live it. We we read everything. We know. We have our our fingers on. Um, the thing that's just hurting us is time. Um, I would love just to wave a magic wand and it all disappears, but you know, that's not going to happen either. Um, through the flushing, you know, through our flushing program that we're doing, um, if we have to increase it in the springtime also to do it twice a year, we will. Um, and we're going to do everything that we can in our power to, uh, to make sure the water is crystal clear. One of the other things that, um, we've done in the past, I've been on. I've been one of the commissioners for, I don't know, 12 years or whatever. And Mike's been on 10 and Kenny's been on, what, seven or eight or whatever. Um, most of our meetings are done, the commissioner's meetings are done in the morning because with well, the exception of you, you get tea times. But, you know, we, we have jobs to get to. So we typically run our meetings early in the morning to get it over with. Um, and we have made some efforts to have meetings in the evening for more participation for the people who want to come join. Um, right now, we're still, we would, we did that for a while, didn't have a whole lot of participation in, in the evening meetings, so we went back to the mornings. If the need comes up to, you know, where people want to start coming to the meetings more often, we can certainly change the time of the meeting to a, to an evening time. Okay, so it's, you know, it, we, we, we will try to accommodate. Like I said, we, we've got jobs to get to in the morning, and if we feel the need or if we've got enough people that would like to come to a meeting and 745 is not conducive to arriving, we'll, we'll change the schedule. But we, we, we can do that based on the time. Is the October 9th meeting gonna be a morning meeting? Morning meetings. That'll be a morning meeting, but we can change it after that. Okay. We'll, we'll change it to the uh, seventh Sunday. <laughs> um, at at twenty three oh five, yeah, I'll be there. Yeah, could be yeah. We had them in the morning. We had them at five o'clock. Yeah, we had them. Yeah, we had them varying times. 
Unless the Trinity Ave issues, we had uh, many different times because there were a bunch of people that wanted to come to meetings. And then once we shut Trinity off and things went back to as normal as they get, then the participation stopped. So you know, we went back to, you know, because Bob has meetings for his job during the week at night too. So it would be like, you know, kind of work around him and stuff like that. So that's what worked. You know, we post our meetings every month. They're, you know, they're out for people to come. Uh, they can get on the agenda if they have something they want to talk about or they can just come and listen. Um, yeah, we have, we have tried. It's not like we're just trying to make it. And again, because we're quasi-municipality <laughs> or, or district, we have the same thing. We have to here to do a meeting law. We have to post everything on time. Uh, we have to take minutes, record the minutes, vote the minutes to accept. I mean, all that, all that other bureaucratic stuff that basically the select board would have to do, we've got to do as well. So um, everything we do is public record. You know, which you know, I think I think this is good to get this stuff out to at least educate people in terms of what's going on. This is complicated stuff, and it's important to understand that. You know, in a lot of ways, our hands are tied. Um, we're looking for suggestions, you know, like, like you said, maybe contact Worcester to see if there's something we can do with them. You know, who knows? You know, but it's 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 definitely worth something that, you know, we, we need the input from our customers. Okay, and not just our customers, because we're customers too. But, um, you know, and, and if you can't make a meeting, email a question. We'll go over them, and we'll email you back with an answer. You know, that, that's another option. We're, we're very open to, to everything. Yes, sir. In Jackson, uh, in Lesson Street. Um, so following up on that, and I agree with you, Mr. Federico, that um, social media is definitely difficult to navigate. Yeah. Um, I think that part of what's proven here tonight, because uh, you do, I, I log on out of curiosity, but I was disappointed in the inverse turnout. You have about 40 people on Zoom last night. Well, that's good. But so I mean, it does show that, um, yeah. you know, offering that engagement is, is another great alternative. And I you want to reiterate that I appreciate you guys coming out and doing this tonight, and that you did give out a, a, a great amount of information that is, it's, I think, vital for people to know. Um, Maybe you consider increasing that outreach on social media a little bit more. Um, I know uh, I think Mr. Pierce has done a great job uh, over the last couple of weeks. Um, my my ask on that was that it was a week or two sooner um, to you know uh, get in front of people's needs a little bit more. Uh, but maybe you consider like even with the email things because it, it is a direct one to one contact and there's a lot of information you have to provide, uh, which again is going to spill out more questions and. Finding that balance is tough, but maybe it's something that you consider. If somebody sends you an email with a question, you then post that and the response that you would send out on your, uh, you know, the Facebook page or on the website, have access to, you know, correspondence. I, I, I think I'd prefer to go on the website. Um, I think the website gives, I'll say it flat out. Facebook is a place where a lot of emotions cloud facts. And this is no situation to get your emotions tied up before the facts. I understand everybody is frustrated. Everybody has, you know, my kid is sick. Their laundry is brown. I can't develop my negatives. I mean, I, I, I get all that, okay? But, you know, if it's a question, it can be answered, okay? And if we can cut some of the emotions out, that would be the best way to do it. And I think probably the best way to do it is on the, uh, on the <coughs> excuse me, on the website. Okay, um, you know, send send it in. We can send out an official answer. Okay, um, we really don't have a media uh, staff member to to do that. Okay, um, you know, I mean, Matt. Um, you know, we asked Matt to help do that because he's got forty years experience running this place, and he's he's semi retired. Okay, and we have him as, as a specialist consultant. Um, so. <clears throat> You know, it's, it would be easier for us to handle the, the inquiries if we would have it through the website. The other thing too is that, and, and I know it's, I know there's questions out there, uh, you know, the people at Zoom, the website's archaic. 
It is. And we're also looking at redesigning that too. So it, it does make it user friendly, but that also takes time too. So we're in the process of looking for a firm to do that too. I understand they're both very valid points. Um, you know, I just, I think that in, in an email exchange, it's really a one-to-one. -one. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you post even just that response in some of these Facebook groups, you can reach a hundred people and, and that response is posted yeah. just the same. Yeah. Or even, if, you know, getting info like that out a little more proactively or, you know, I don't mean that's not critical, um, helps people like select board members make sure that they're getting uh, accurate information out to people in a timely fashion as well. Mm -hmm. um, I, again, for me, it's just about getting that information out uh, because I think people can generally be reasonable. You're going to have, you know, the outliers that are upset regardless, but they can generally be reasonable if they know what's happening and roughly how long they can expect it to happen, mm -hmm. uh, which I think we've seen an improvement in those mm -hmm. communications, like I said, mm -hmm. uh, because of Pearson Online and, and some of the reactions that's gotten back from them. So, thank you for listening. Uh, appreciate it. Well, anybody else? We're good. I guess that's going to conclude uh, tonight. Again, we have a regular uh, Wild District meeting the ninth at a quarter of eight. Mm -hmm. um, again, this was this was just a. In this is just an informational uh, meeting. It was recorded. Uh, our official meeting again is October 9th at quarter of eight. Hopefully we'll see some people there. We'll also discuss too about changing uh, some times to accommodate more people to come. We want people to come, we want input. Um, we're all in this system together. And um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.